Hi, MAT 103. Um, it's April 23rd and we're still in class time, but unfortunately Blackboard was not able to continue the session. I heard about this happening in a couple of other classes, but it had never happened to me. So um, this is my first go around with Blackboard not being able to host class. Um, it's not going to be a big deal. I'm going to make this video, which will complete the lecture, show you everything you need to know about histograms, and then, you know, you'll go take your attendance quiz. The word of the day is peppercorn. And um, yeah, so watch this video to learn all about histograms. In class today, we practice reading histograms and you all did a very good job in being able to do so. So excellent work with that. This is one more example working with trying to read histograms. This histogram in particular shows the height in inches of the students in a classroom okay, grouped into five inch groups. What that tells me is that if you have a height of 50, 51, 52, 53, or 54 inches, then your height goes in this bin. If you have a height of 65, 66, 67, 68, or 69, your height goes into this bin. So if your height was 70, you would squeak up into the next bin, okay? This left end marks the start of the bin. So this is, again is 50, 51, 52 inches or 53 inches or even 54 inches, but not 55, okay? 55 automatically gets put into the next bin. So what I want you to do is look at the histogram of all 21 students, how many were greater than or equal to 60 inches tall? How many were greater than or equal to 60 inches tall? Okay. These are tall people, right? So let's see. You can pause the video right now if you wanna try it on your own and then play the video to come and check your answer, okay? Okay, so if we wanna figure out how many were 60 inches or taller, what are we doing? We're counting how many students were 60 to 65 inches, 65 to 70 inches, 70 inches to 75 inches, or 75 inches to 80 inches. They haven't marked any other students, which means we're at the tallest student is between 75 and 80 inches tall. So we need to add up these frequencies. Recall from class that what we can do is draw a horizontal line or to the best of our ability over to the frequency axis. And that's gonna tell us how many students are in that bin. Right away in the orange, call, in the orange bar, I'm seeing five students were between 60 and 65 inches tall. Hopefully you got the same thing. Let's check 65 to 70. I'm getting that two students were between 65 and 70 inches tall. I don't need a question mark there anymore because we know how many students were in there. The frequency axis tells us that. Uh, the green axis, The green bin, we can do the exact same thing. Let's figure that out. How many students were this tall? Three students were between 70 and 75 inches. And in the purple bin, I see from 75 to 80 inches, only, oh, not a very straight line, only one student was that tall. So what we can do is we can add five, the first five students, the next two students, the next three tallest students, and then the absolute tallest student way out here, we can add him up as well. So how many students were 60 inches or taller? Well, five plus two is seven, plus three is 10, plus one is 11. So I'm looking at this, not 21, that's too high. 17, too high, six, too low, C, 11, just right. 11 students were 60 inches or taller. All right, we need to learn how to make our own histograms. What you start with is just a pile of data. You have data points. Um, your job is to create something meaningful from that. Remember the steps of, um, or the process in creating statistics. For histograms, 
you need to figure out what is the smallest and the largest data point. Okay, you need to mark those down. You could have a small data point like one, you could have a large data point like 99, something like this. And then your job would be to create bins along this axis that don't overlap, but that capture all data between one and 99. So we control how many bins we want to use in order to capture all of this data. Before, in the last example, they had bins that were size five. So, so in this problem, that would look like bins that contained one, oops, let me get my pen, one, two, three, four, five. That's five data points would fit into the first bin. The next bin would contain data points that were six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's one, two, three, four, five data points again. The next bin could contain 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. That's another five data points, okay? You decide how many bins you want there to be based on um, how much range you have in your data. Our data runs from one to 99. That's a large range of data. So what we need to be able to do is represent the data well. Try a certain bin size. In this case, I'm trying out five as my bin size. I'm going to sort my data in there, marking the frequencies, and then I'll take a peek at it. Am I, is the data sort of spread out enough to make sense, but clustered enough that I can see patterns? The more you do this, the better you're going to get at making sense of the visual, okay? So <clears throat> let's go on with our process here. We choose a size for the bin so that we capture all of the data from the smallest to the largest. And then we're gonna count the number of data points that fit into each and every bin, okay? Once we have that, we're gonna represent that frequency as the height of the rectangle, okay? And that's how we end up with rectangular um, structures within the histogram, All right, Let's practice. In this example, someone opened up a bag of trail mix, a new bag, and they counted the number of chocolate candies inside the trail mix. And in that first bag that they opened, there were 50 chocolate candies. Okay. Then they went out and they bought another bag of trail mix. They opened it up from scratch, it was a sealed bag, they opened it, and then they counted the number of chocolates in that bag. There were 42 chocolate candies in that bag of trail mix. They kept doing it and with new bags every single time, and they counted out the number of chocolates in a trail mix bag. I can't imagine why someone would be so interested in chocolate candies and trail mix, but you know, statistics can show up anywhere. So I guess they were just trying to make sense of the number of chocolate candies per trail mix bag. What does that spread look like? So let's go ahead and count how many bags that they went through to count these chocolates. I'm counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 in the first row. There's 11 data points in the first row. Okay, I've counted 11 data points here. In the second row, I see a one-to-one -one correspondence between them, so I don't need to count them again. I also have 11 here. That tells me I have 22 total data points here. That means somebody opened up, purchased, and opened up 22 bags of trail mix just to count the chocolates. Okay, so typical math problem for you, maybe, Maybe the context is a little wonky, but it's a good practice problem, okay? The numbers are well spread. So we have to figure out what is our smallest data point in the entire set. The smallest data point in this set, I'm just reading through, I think it's 31. I don't see anything lower than a 31. Now, if you were using a computer program like Excel, it would sort the data for you and it would give you the highest and the lowest immediately. I'm seeing that my lowest data point is 33, 
And what's the highest data point? Go through that data, find the highest data point, and see if you get what I get. So far, I see 119 is pretty high. I'm getting 119 is the highest per bag of trail mix. So I have to make sure that when I'm representing my data on these axes, that I go all the way up to 119. You can see already that there's a problem with this practice, okay? And that's a great way to introduce how to properly do it, is to show you how not to do it, okay? So I got this example, and it's good to notice these problems along the way. And if you are ever making your own histogram, and you notice that you don't have enough bins to cover all of your data, then you need to add another bin, all right? So this, this particular bin would go from 101 to 120. You can see that the bins go from 1 to 20, 21 to 40, 41 to 60, et cetera, et cetera. So we're counting each bin has 20 candies in it, 20 chocolate candies in it. So I just added another one on there. And if I had one that had 140 in it, I'd have to keep going and keep going. Add bins on until I've captured all of my data. Now, anytime I add one of these bins in the table, I'm going to have to add one to my chart. Okay, and I need to make it equal size to the other ones in, in width so that all of my data is represented equally. I don't want to make a tiny little bin over here that maybe is only this long and try to fit it on that white sheet of paper there because then all of these other bins or rectangles will look so big compared to this one. So I want to make sure I'm being fair to the data. So again, this is 101 to 120. And we need to figure out how many data points are going to go in each of these bins. right? Just scroll back up to the top here. So what I like to do is create this frequency table and count how many data points go into each of these bins. Okay, how many bins do I have? Maybe we should start there. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six bins that I need to count through. Now, some people will just put sort of like a tally mark anytime they see a number that fits into a bin. That's fine. That's a perfectly good method. Um, I like to be a little more detailed than that. And so what I actually do is I write all of the data values that fit into each of the bins as I'm going. Right. So I look at the first data point and I categorize it. Which bin does 50 fall into? Well, it, it's not a number between 1 and 20. 50 is bigger than that. 50 is not a number between 21 and 40, but 50 is going to go into my third bin here, 41 to 60. So I just write that data point in there. This is above and beyond. Um, you can just put a tick mark because you found one that goes into that bin. I like to write those actual data values. All right, I look at my next number and I'm underlining them pretty deeply to make sure I know I've already counted that piece of data. I don't need to count it again. All right, so you can see that 42 will also go into bin number three because 42 is between 41 and 60. 119, that goes in my big bin. 45 goes into bin three. 68, that's going to be my first data point in bin number four. 32, bin number two, because it's between 21 and 40. 67 will be in joining 68 and bin 4. 111, joining 119. There's 111 there. 61, bin 4. 31, that's going to go in bin 2. So maybe I didn't even need that first interval at all, 1 through 20, in order to capture all the data here. Let's keep going. 75. That's bin four. Continue doing the rest of these. I'm going to fill in the table with the answers and you'll see them in just a second. Okay, so do this on your own, pause the video and complete sorting. I went ahead and sorted the rest of the data points and I did that in purple so you could see what the new data points were from the last time we talked. Now, I can see in my bins how many are in there 
And I think that I'm gonna add another color here and I'm just gonna add these up in green on the side. I'm gonna count how many, what is the frequency okay, of each of uh, these data points in the bins. So I'm gonna ask myself how many data points were between one and 20? Zero, there are no data points here. This is completely blank. How many data points were between 21 and 40? One, two, three, four. That's 32, 31, 39, and 33. That's four data points. Let's keep counting. How many data points are in bin three? One, two, three, four, five, six. I see six data points here. How many in bin four? I see seven data points there, two in bin five, and what looks like three in bin number six. Now, don't uh, skip this next step, all right? You've counted how many data points lie in each interval, go in each bin, you could say. But does that total number add up to 22? This is a great way to check your work before you get started because if you miscount how many data points you have, there's no way your histogram will be 100% correct. You have to represent all 22 points. Okay, remember there were 22 total points. So let's add these up. Zero plus four plus six plus seven plus two plus three. Those are the bin totals. The number of data points in each of those bins and I just wanna add those up. Zero and four is four. Four and six is 10. 10 and seven is 17. 2 and 17 is 19, 3 and 19 is 22, thank goodness. Okay, we have all 22 data points here, so this checks out. We've sorted all of the data. We are ready with that frequency table to create, to construct the histogram itself. Okay, so it's kind of hard to draw on this tablet, but I'm going to do my best to represent the data here. Okay. No data points were between 1 and 20. So this first bin, bin number 1, is going to be completely empty. There's not going to be a rectangle there. Okay, It has a height of 0, so there's no rectangle in the first bin. But let's look at our second bin here. We figured out that four data points were in that bin. So what we do is we count up the frequency. So 1, 2, 3, 4 data points. Three, four data points were in this bin. So this is how we represent it using non-overlapping, okay, but touching rectangular bins. So this bin had a height of four. I'll just make that mark here. Let me get another color here. Again, I'm trying my hardest to draw straight lines, but it's very difficult. Uh, from 41 to 60, so this is bin number three, we're looking at a height of six, six bags contained between 41 and 60 chocolate candies, okay, just to tie it back to the context here. So I'm trying to draw these straight lines because histograms use rectangles to represent the data. And this had a height of six. I'm gonna try to find another color here. Let's do something over here. Okay. Uh, bin number four, which is 61 to 80 chocolate candies in the trail mix bags, there were seven trail mix bags that met that criteria. Oh, we'll try to be a little straighter about this. Seven candy bags. So let me, again, I'm so sorry that these lines aren't straight. Do your best to make yours as straight as possible. Okay, this is a rectangle with a height of seven. Now ask yourself how many trail mix bags from our sample had um, 81 to 100 candies in it. Well, if we look here, we counted two bags had that many candies. So all we have to do is draw a very short rectangle relative to the others. There we go. And this one had a height of two, only two bags fit that characteristic. Let's do one more, one more color here. Do it in a darker green. Bin number six, three bags had between 
101 and 120 chocolate pieces. So a little, a little, touching a little bit higher than the last rectangle up to a frequency height of three. So bin number six had three bags in it. So after I finished, you know, marking those frequency rectangles in my bins, I just went over them with a little rectangle tool in order to show you what the filled in rectangles would look like. Now, as a personal preference, I like to write in those actual frequencies so it's a little bit easier to read and some histograms will do this for you. So my first bin, four, six, seven, two, three, just so you can have that data right on hand. Okay, now, Here's what you lose with a histogram. You lose the individual data points. What they do is they cluster in these bins and there's a very, a very limited short range that you're looking at. I know that four data points landed between 21 and 40, but I don't know what those individual data points were. Okay, the same thing in each of these bins. So you lose a little bit of the detail, but you still get the overall idea that, well, most of the bags had between 68 and 20. I'm sorry, 61 and 80. Okay, that was the highest frequency, All right? And there are other analyses we could do. We could say that the majority had between 41 and 80. Look at that's 13 out of 22. There's all sorts of different ways you can look at this data and using a histogram is one of the easiest ways. All right, so this is the only problem that you have to do on your homework. If you feel confident enough, you do not have to watch this video and you can go create your own frequency histogram. I'm doing numbers one, two, and three from homework um, number one. So the first question is all about creating a, a histogram about the daily high temperature. Okay, so on different days, so on day number one, the temperature was 63 degrees. Okay, uh, on day number two, the temperature was 70 degrees. On day number three, it was 64 degrees and so on, okay, in Fahrenheit. So I've already given you this frequency table that we're gonna fill out again. These are our bins, all right? Now I'm gonna work at the short way this time where I'm just putting a tally mark in the corresponding bin instead of trying to write out all the values, which is what I prefer to do, but that might not be how you wanna work it out. So I'm gonna try it the other way. I'm gonna look at the first data point, 63. Where does it go? We'll call this bin number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, number six, number seven. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and pop that into bin number five. I'm just gonna put a tally mark there, okay? Then I'm looking at my next data point, where does 70 hit? That goes in bin seven. I'm not writing 70, I'm putting a tick mark. Then um, 64. So now there's two data points in bin number five, 71. Now there's two data points in bin number seven, 70. Three data points in bin number seven, 62, bin number five. So I want you to do the rest of the data and then check back in with the table in just a minute. All right, so if you're tuning back in, you should check your table to make sure that you have the same number of tick marks in each of your bins. I'm gonna go ahead and tally those up. I don't see any data points between 40 and 44. Hopefully you didn't get any there either. I found four data points between 45 and 49, six data points in bin three, eight data points in bin four, five data points in bin five, four data points in bin six, and four data points in bin seven. So count yours up, tally them up, and see if you got the same frequencies as I did in each of the bins. All right, so now we can continue on. Once you know your bins, like 40 through 44, 45 through 49, et cetera, you know how many data points fit in each of those bins, you're ready to make your histogram. It's really just a matter of translating that data into the rectangles. So since zero data points lie between 40 and 44, there will not be a rectangle there. So in bin number two, 45 to 49, we had four data points. I'm gonna do using, I'm gonna use my rectangle tool here. Okay. 
use my rectangle tool. Let's see if this will work. Yes, so I want to have a frequency of four. Let's see if I can put this rectangle in the right place. Okay, we need a height of four on that rectangle. So then for bin number three, 50 to 54, we need a height of six, a height of six. So I'm gonna cozy up right to that pink rectangle. They need to not overlap, but they need to be right next to each other. And I'm gonna drag that height up to a height of six. Sorry, I keep moving that background around a little bit. All right, let's keep going. For bin number four, 55 to 59, we need a rectangle with a height of eight because that's the frequency there. Let me get another color here. Okay, we need to get a rectangle. It has a height of eight. So again, I'm cozying up right next to that blue rectangle and dragging the height up to eight and making the width as wide as the bin is on the axis. Okay, let's look at 60 to 64. We have five data points there, a frequency of five. Again, I'll get another color here so it's kind of stands out a little bit. Usually you'll see pretty colorful histograms for this reason, just for the visual. From 60 to 64, we had five data points. So we're gonna pop that in, cozy up right next to the last one, the last rectangle bin, and bring the height up to five. All right, let's keep going. I want you to finish the last two bins and check back in to see if your work matches mine. Hopefully your graph looks a bit like mine. If we just go ahead and verify these frequencies, make sure they match the table. I'm just going to write the frequency in each of the bins. Bin one didn't have any data points. Uh, bin number two, it has a height of, oops, let me get a, a color we can actually see on here. It has a height of four. So I'm just going to pop a four in there and I'm just checking these. The rectangle has a height of six. So that's good. It matches my data. Eight matches the data. Five matches the data. Four matches my frequency table, and again, four matches the frequency table. And it really is as easy as that. You're just sorting data into different bins and representing them using rectangles. So hopefully that doesn't feel too bad. When you go to do um, homework 14, remember I told everyone you only have to do numbers one, two, and three. We already did number one, that's that's the really long part, okay? But if you wanted to look at number two, it would say to calculate the mean of the data that we were just given. Okay, I'm not gonna work that part out for you, but I will tell you what you need to do. Uh, remember that the mean is like the average. So what we need to do is add up all of the individual data points, all of those individual data points. So just to get you started, that would look something like 63 plus 70 plus 64. I'm just reading them in order. Plus 71 straight from our original data list. Plus 70 plus dot dot dot. And you have to do all of them all the way down to 48 at the end of the table. After you add up all of those values, you have to divide by the number of data points that you actually had. So let's go ahead and count that. In the first row, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven data points. Let me mark that on this part here. It's a little visual is better. In the second row, I also have eleven. There's a one-to-one -one correspondence there between the numbers in the row, but in the third row, I'm missing two data points here. So I only have nine. Okay, I only have nine there. That tells me I have 31 data points. Eleven and nine is twenty. 20 and 11, that's what's giving me 31 here. So to do my mean, I add up all 31 data points and then I divide by 31. All right, you gotta add them all up, not just the ones I wrote here. To do number three, you have to do the median. It's easier to compute, it just takes a little bit of time because it's not enough for you to just look at the data in any order. You actually have to write them in order from least to greatest and then find the middle term. 
Okay, so I believe that the smallest value in our data set was in the 40s, between 45 and 49. I'm seeing a 46. Okay, so you're going to order these from 46, and I believe there's two 46s, so you're just going to start writing down all of these numbers in numerical value, okay, in order from least to greatest, and you have to do it for all 31 of them, and you're going all the way up to the largest data point, which let me see, it was it 74? I'm seeing 72. 72 is the largest data point. Okay, so you're going all the way from 46 dot 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 all the way up to 72. That's all 31. And what you need to do is you need to find the middle, the middle term. That's what your median is. Okay, hopefully this uh, introduction to histograms and means and medians, these measures of center, didn't feel too overwhelming. Um, if you just do this on your homework 14, turn that in, you're going to get a 100 on that assignment. You could ignore the rest of them or you can do them for the practice. Okay, that's up to you. You should be starting in on your project. And I just wanted to apologize one more time that uh, we all got kicked out of Blackboard and, and it just couldn't support our class today. Hopefully this video finds you well. Stay safe out there.